Aw oh, man, I love adventure games. And one of the most notable adventure game series in my life has been the Mac Venture series. The Mac Venture series pioneered point and click adventure games through four games released back in the mid to late 80s. These were developed by ICOM Simulations, published by Mindscape, and had both excellent graphics, controls, and sound for the time. These were fun games. I've talked about Uninvited in the past, but today we're taking a look at Shadowgate. Shadowgate is probably the most well-known of the MacVenture series, and throughout the late 80s and early 90s, this game was ported to several major home computer systems, and even saw a release on the Nintendo Entertainment System and the Game Boy Color. In 2014, it was re-released on Steam, along with a new remastered version by Zojoy, a company started by the main creatives behind the original, Dave Marsh and Carl Roloffs. The NES version is probably the most well-known of the ports. This version wasn't by the original developers, but it does a good job of bringing the experience to consoles, if not a bit cut down. The computer version came with at least two different retail releases, that I know of anyways. There was a boxed version that was kind of the cheaper release, and this release that I find more desirable. So this is the good release, that comes in sort of a hardcover folio textbook type of package, with the game discs and flyers on the left, and the manual tucked in on the right. I have the manual from both releases, and as you can tell here, the manual that comes in this release is in color and of much higher quality. Inside the package you would get a quick reference guide, some advertisements for other Mindscape titles, and an offer for an official hint book from ICOM. This one has been filled out and sent in, but I do have the flyer that I got with Uninvited. Interesting that here, on this earlier game, the hint sheet was a freebie but I guess they decided to start charging five bucks for them. So you'd fill this out and check which games you want the hint books for, and then they would send you back one of these. This hint book is interesting because it doesn't just flat out tell you the answers. It actually tries pretty well to keep you from spoiling the game. So you'd find the area of the game that you were stuck, then the puzzle that you're having trouble with, then below it, you've got three separate answers which progressively get more revealing. They've also scrambled the answers in the back so that you can't just read the next line down to get the solution to the next puzzle. It really is a well put together hint book. I'll have to scan this if it's not online already. The story to Shadowgate is fairly simple, if not a bit generic at times. You, being the last of the line of kings, are the only person who can venture into Castle Shadowgate a vast fortress populated by dragons, demons, and trolls. Your quest is to stop the evil warlock lord from using his dark magic to raise a nasty behemoth from the depths of the earth and save the world. The only way to defeat the warlock lord is with a weapon called the Staff of Ages, which you might have guessed has been broken into pieces. You've got to find all the pieces and put them back together then face the warlock. The story does have a little more depth to it, which you can learn about if you make it to the library, but that's the gist of the story. Every interaction in the game is controlled here at the top of the screen. You can click on any of these buttons to perform the actions on different objects in the game. I've always really liked this interface. They used it throughout all the MacVenture games. It was a very easy command system. There's only one area in this entire game where you must use the keyboard to type a spell, but the rest of the game is completely mouse controlled. Another main thing in this game, well, it might be the biggest thing, is that in order to stay alive, you must always have a lit torch throughout the game. The torches do stay lit for several turns, and once you see it start to flicker, that means it's time to light another. If you don't, you'll be trapped in the dark. At which point, you can move maybe one or two rooms before you fall and break your neck. There are several torches in this game. You'll want to make sure to always grab as many as you can find, or at least as many as you can hold in your inventory. 
There are a couple parts in this game where your inventory gets so full, you don't have room for much. And since the torches are a limited consumable, this effectively puts a time limit to the game itself. There's only so many turns you can take, so it might take several attempts to get all the way through the game. There are a ton of puzzles to solve in this game. It is a very difficult game to go at without the aid of a hint book, or one of the many walkthrough text files online. It's completely possible to finish this game without hints, but it would take a long time to figure everything out. There's just so many objects and different combinations to try. A lot of it's just trial and error. Because there are so many ways to die in this game. Ways that have no indication that they might be harmful. It will take a lot of torches to buy you enough time to experiment with different objects to progress. I would always start a new save data at several points in the game, so that if you mess something up that makes the game impossible to complete, you can jump back to one of your earlier saves. As usual with the MacVenture games, it features amazing black and white, one-bit artwork. I mean, look at this intro screen. Here you've got the hero up front, a vicious dragon blowing fire everywhere, a magical sword on a creepy pedestal, castle shadow gate in the background with a lightning storm brewing in the distance, and the grim reaper. Man, this is pretty badass. These graphics as a whole in this game are very imaginative. A well put together game world with enough detail to captivate and to creep you out. <laughs> This isn't always an easy thing to accomplish when you're dealing with one-bit graphics. These were skillfully crafted, and everything is very easy to understand. I really enjoyed the sound effects and short musical tunes in this game. There are some sound effects that seem to be recycled from previous games, but everything works well and sounds surprisingly crisp for the hardware in these computers. This game came out back in 1987. A time where most adventure games didn't have actual digitized sounds, and this added another level of immersion to the game's world. Like any good Mac Venture game, Shadowgate has its secrets. There are two mysteries with this game that I haven't figured out, and it doesn't seem that many other people have either. The first is with this locked door near the end of the game. The keys don't unlock it, and there's just no way that I can think of to open it. What's behind the door? Hmm. The next secret, which is the biggest, is with this big landslide in the waterfall room. You can clearly see that it's listed as an exit in the exit window, but these rocks prevent you from going that way. It's not necessary to go through here to beat the game, but man, does it have my curiosity peaked. There is a mention of it in the hint manual, but all three clues tell you to forget about it, almost taunting in language. I searched old Usenet posts, and there were rumors about using a particular potion positioned in a particular spot and hitting it with a sling using a certain rock to blow it up. Well, I tried all the rocks on the potions, even the ones in the laboratory, with no luck. But when I tried drinking this potion, it said my body exploded so I'm wondering if that might be important. I don't know man, I haven't figured it out. If you know, definitely let me know and I'll do a follow-up video. So this is pretty much what Shadowgate is all about. Search, solve, and save. It's very easy to get lost in this game's world. There are so many objects that you can examine and interact with and explore. I've played through this game two separate times in the last year. And I do believe this game still holds up on the classic Macintosh. If you're a fan of the Nintendo version of Shadowgate, I recommend you try this original Mac version. It lacks the music and color graphics of the NES version, but it makes up for it with its atmosphere, eerie graphics, and good sound effects. It's a great game that's still a lot of fun to play.